On this week's episode, we talk about all the characters that seem to have a crush on Link. If only he didn't have to save Hyrule. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am Kate Fisher, and I'm here with my co-host. Hi. Oh, hey, Kate. How you doing? This I'm is, David Geisler. He's David Geisler. <laughs> oh, I wasn't if, I sure, if I would have waited a half a second, you would have introduced maybe. me. Maybe. I wasn't sure if you wanted to say your name or if mm. you wanted me to say your name. You know, because I you think, say it better than I do. I think typical hosting responsibilities usually even though we're both co-hosts here usually the the host says the name of like the guest or something hey it's david geisler hey everybody (laughs) (laughs) i'm really good at this actually you're doing great i love it i am very much enjoying making this podcast with you kate um what are we talking about today we are talking (laughs) thank you for the guiding question we are talking about links or rather um not his love interest but the people, characters, however you want to categorize them, all of these organisms that are in That's love. That's true. That's true. In love with Link that are not Zelda throughout all these Zelda. I have a little games. story about this topic. May I tell it quickly? You may. So, uh, hey, audience. And Kate, it's funny, Kate, because it's something that happened with you and I, but um, we were out. Maybe in Milwaukee, maybe down in Kenosha. I can't remember. We were out with a group of people at a bar somewhere. And you came up to me, this is even before we recorded our first episode, I think. Yep. And you were like, <laughs> you were like, what if we do an episode about all of Link's side pieces? And I was like, what? Come again? What? <laughs> and you were like, like, there are so many girls that have crushes on Link and all the different games that aren't Zelda. Right. And a lot it's of times a- Link is just like, peace out or whatever. Yep. And I was <laughs> like, oh my theme. God, that's hysterical. We must do an episode about that. That's too funny. And so I didn't even know what to call this episode. I decided to call it If Only, as if, if like, it's like, if only he didn't have to go save Hyrule, maybe he'd marry Rudo or marry whoever. So, uh, so what, so I don't know. What do you, what would you like to talk about first here? Um, well, since you brought up Rudo, so there's always, it seems, a Zora character. Dude, the Zoras are so hot for Link. They really, really are. And so obviously there's Princess Rudo from Ocarina of Time. She's the one that I first, I mean, which she's, I think she's maybe the most aggressive. Oh, yeah. She's like, we're going to get married. <laughs> Like, it's going to happen. Here is, you know, the jewel of my people. Now we going to get married. (laughs) So she's, yeah, she's very serious. Um, And so obviously I keep talking about Ocarina of Time because that was like the first game I played. But that was the moment I was like, oh, what? what, Oh, even in Ocarina, there's like three or four gals crushing on him. That is true. I mean, passively, Saria in the beginning is longing for him That's a little kinda, bit as he yeah. leaves. Kind of like his high school sweetheart, if Perhaps. you will, is yeah. Saria. But then Rudo's like... <laughs> I'm in it. She aggressive. To win it. <laughs> She's in it. Um, so let's continue talking about Rudo a little bit, because we do see her later. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you feel about when Link, when Link comes back to her and she's a grown woman? What happens? Does she get mad at him? I uh, Because he didn't... Marry her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I think I think so. I also like the whole, uh, well, I guess I don't like the aspect of the game where you have to carry her around, but I do enjoy her attitude. Like, mm, you, yeah. didn't, you put me down. Yeah, you true. left. Mm, you had to carry me everywhere. Yeah, I remember having mixed emotions about carrying her through Jabu Jabu, but I think ultimately it was probably an interesting mechanic, kind of a cool thing. Yeah, it was something different, but I just thought it was funny that she gets so mad if you don't carry her everywhere. <laughs> yeah, wait, what, if you try to leave a room while she's still on the ground or something? She yells at you when you come back, and she's like, yeah. oh, how dare you leave me? That's right. Of course, that's a mechanic because they need you to keep that in. They, they need course. to keep her in the game memory. Of course. But sure, that's 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 great. Okay. Yeah, Rude is the most aggressive. So then I did m- mention Saria. Mm-hmm. I, I guess we're doing Ocarina first. Or, well, I guess so. That's the well. Rudo was the first one I thought of because she is the most kind of like in his face about it. She makes it very clear. Saria is definitely more. I don't know. Like we've always been connected since we were kids, and it's kind of sweet. And she doesn't like outwardly say like "I love you," but I feel like if Link would have stayed in uh, the Kokiri Village, Kokiri Village, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I'm reminded right now of our conversation two episodes ago where I was having a hard time saying Kakiri and Kakariko. Oh. 
So I am incredibly dyslexic. And so sometimes when I see these words on the screens, they K's. almost look like the same word. Sure. And I was re-listening to episode one since our last episode. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> Thank you. They, for know what, up with they know what you mean. So, yeah. yeah. So in the uh, <clears throat> Kakirio village, <laughs> I feel like if Link <laughs> would just stay there, yeah. Saria would be all, she'd be good with it. Yep. And um, we had fun. Um Acting out the scene where he runs away from her like, on the bridge the other, the famous the other first week. cut scene in the Zelda universe. Yeah, one of the first really cinematic scenes mm-hmm. that um, we were talking about how at the time it seemed very serious and cinematic. How he oh kind of God, it was hard walks drama. forward a couple steps and then runs away. But then Wait, you watch talk, it. Talk us through the scene real quick. So um, she gives him her ocarina right yes not the ocarina of of time because he does need one to execute a few things first yeah it's the original ocarina so she gives him that and she's like well i guess you're leaving so i'll never see you again goodbye and then he kind of slowly approaches her and then he's like the camera does do a few push-ins on their face there's like a bit of a close-up on saria close-up on link and then there That's is cool. that medium wide shot where he walks towards her. Walks towards her, and then he very abruptly turns and runs. He books away. it. <laughs> He just turns around and runs. And I think that that's probably just more of like a silliness of the um, dexterity of the animation of right, the time. Right. But man, it's funny. It's funny nowadays when you're watching it. And so it's also. Because they still cut back to a close up of Saria with a slow zoom in of her yeah. just like looking at him. <laughs> yeah. But I will say in that moment, it's so cool when that music's like. Go to black. Comes up on Hyrule Field, and all of a sudden you just hear, gong, gong, yep. gong. you're like, oh, it's beginning. Yes. Oh, that's such a good feeling. It's an adventure. And I think that that is highlighted by that Saria scene coming off of the, all things considered, the drama of the Saria the scene. Going into the fields feels great. Yeah. Yep. So there is that one. And then... Saria comes back around as a sage, but I don't think she ever like really hits on him. No, no. You, I think it's kind of more like a gut feeling you have about them than anything. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. There, yeah, there's nothing definitely outwardly obvious necessarily. And then there's also um, Malin, which we. So Malin at the at the ranch. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she's. Well, fairy boy. She, she's the one that calls him fairy boy, I think. Oh, really? I think. Yeah, I think you're right. That, right. Oh, you're the fairy boy. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So what's your take on Malin? Are we stretching to say that she has a crush on Link? She's clearly. Maybe. She reminds me a little bit of. I know that you're playing. Link's Awakening right now, uh-huh. she feels very much like the girl that you meet in the beginning of that game. Yeah. Is well, that the, Malin? They're both singing, right? They're both, they're, they're both the singers. The name is slightly different, I think. It's Malin and Marin. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I get confused as to who is who. Yeah. Well, I, that's, I don't blame you for that. It's one letter. But oh, it's yeah. Marin in Link's Awakening and yeah. Malin in Ocarina. Yeah. 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 And so, and they're both singing songs. Both those girls have similar capacities. There's like, there's a, a general sense of interest. Yeah, I almost just I had this random thought just now that she's kind of like the Luna Lovegood of she's kind of like quirky, kind of like, oh, this, Malin. Is, this is a song that I like. Here's a song. Here's my horse. So I think the first That's time your you, horse now. the first time you see Malin is actually when you're approaching Hyrule Castle. The first time you approach Hyrule Castle, mm, she's there right. to help she's you out with the, out with the chicken thing. She the gives you a chicken egg. Yep. She's looking for her dad. And so that was kind of interesting. So you definitely help her out. Mm hmm. I don't think she ever blatantly hits on oh, him, no. though. Oh, no. I don't think so. But she's just kind of, like, kind and sweet and calls him fairy boy, which I think <laughs> is, a, you know, a, a, I can't think of the word I'm trying to think of, but just, like, a complimentary term, you know, like a friendly, uh, affectionate term for yeah. him. Yeah. And then Malin kind of doesn't come back. Oh, my goodness. Does she come back when you're older? I don't recall seeing her. I don't. Because that ranch is broken down when you go back when you're older. Right. Or it's taken over. Oh, basically. my God. What happens know. to Malin? I don't know. Someone tell us. <laughs> Someone give us feedback. Make up a story or tell us what actually happened. Holy cow. She did. So um, so let's talk about then just as a little bonus thing. I'm just making this up right now. In, you know, Zelda herself has different capacities of romance for Link in the different games. Yes. What's your take on Zelda in Ocarina? Um, Ocarina, I have like the BFF vibe. There. A little bit. I don't have necessarily a very romantic vibe. There's like, like an, a, an implied archetype kind of romance towards the end, especially with the Ganon fight where she's there with him. But right. there's never like 
there's no embrace or anything. No, and they didn't, you know, some games like Skyward Sword, they actually grew up together, yeah. where this one, they, they meet as kids, but it's just kind of like, oh, hey, check this out. Help me. Okay, thanks. Bye. Like it's, She's clearly a romance character in Skyward Sword. Yeah, but I don't think so much in Ocarina of Time. Speaking of Skyward Sword, are there any, um, are there any girl crushes? Oh, <laughs> Milo, your cat's joining our cat conversation guest. here. He's into it. Um, he's like, I don't think Skyward Sword, she was a romantic character. He has very strong opinions. I cannot think of any romance, romance adjacent gals in Skyward Sword. Um, I'm trying to recall, but not really. Not so it's mainly Zelda. Skyward and that S- seems pretty mm-hmm. obvious. Yeah, you know what? That's true. That Zelda's. one's more of a romance because also Link kind of goes to those three areas and those are more adventure zones. There's not like... There really is not so much of the go from town to town to town thing that happens in Twilight or other games. Um, Speaking of Twilight, though, I can't help but think of Ilya. Oh, absolutely. She's so she's a bit of a Saria in that game, isn't she? I think so. I think she's like, yeah, her counterpart um, because he's trying desperately to save her memory and just Mm -hmm. be there for her in general. And she she gives him a couple looks. That I think are significant. I think she legitimately has romantic feelings for him in that game. Oh, yeah, I think so. And honestly, it feels like he might as well. She's projecting onto his horse, too. Yes. No, I agree. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Very much so. Like, being very protective of the horse. Like, mm-hmm. this isn't about the horse. Come on. <laughs> Be real. Yeah, and her dad runs the village and stuff. So that it's almost like Zelda Light a little bit. She's the princess a of the town. A little bit, yep. And he's the... The king of the village. And in Twilight Princess, Zelda is not rom- a romantic character at all. She's almost just an icon. Yep. Yep. You know, she really is just royalty. Yep. So Ilya would be the main, the main squeeze, if you will, in Twilight Princess, I think. Is Midna romantic with Link? We have discussed this, and I think I'm unsure because it's not really a friend. I don't get a friend vibe. But she's a little spitfire when she's in her like imp form or whatever it yeah. is, which is fine. Yeah. And I know she gives him a hard time and is kind of like, do what I say. But mm. it's definitely not just like she gets attached when, to okay, him. Let's obviously. dissect this a little bit. When she gets into her human form right at the end, uh-huh. I don't think that there's any like touch or embrace or there's not like I think she goes to do her thing. Right. I th- <laughs> Milo is <laughs> Milo loving this. Opinions. He's really into this. Um, Yeah, I don't think so. I think she just kind of. I will say, I think she comes around on Link a little bit through that game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, she gets attached to him in some capacity. Okay, let me ask you this. If Link didn't have to save Hyrule, would he and Binda end up together? Mm, I think probably not. Probably not, because she has to run her own. Gig. That's part of those one of those things where like what is one of these if only characters one of these side piece characters is it the is it that because Minda is a little bit part of the main narrative as we've discussed oh yeah so like Ilya is more one of those if Link didn't have to go save Hyrule or if those things didn't happen to him right because she's in the village that he, he grew up grew with up her in. Mm-hmm. I have <laughs> Telma in my notes is Telma the bar lady so she's the bar lady she. She's, she's kind of like hot for him, but she's hot for everybody. She's hot for everybody. She has mostly the hots for, uh, is it Ronaldo or Renato? Or is that Ilya's dad? No, that is the shaman in right. Costa Rico Village. And she definitely likes him because she like chases after him. They kind of him. flat out kind but of emulate not. a family halfway through the game, in fact, with the other kids. They, she stays in Kakariko Village. Yep, yep. Even though the guy that she's in love with is not really having it, he's like, ugh, her. Okay, fine. Like, Wait, really? You don't remember the that? Guy? Yeah, he's like, okay, whatever. Like, he's oh, wow. very whatever about it. But Perhaps. she definitely... Maybe he's just trying to stay polite? I, <laughs> pr- probably, I don't know. But she definitely like, makes... I'm a shaman, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my business. Um, she definitely makes some remarks toward Link and, like, does the winky... <laughs> She like, does, yeah. There's a couple of those. I, I don't think she's serious, but she does flirt with him. So another sure. so another set of characters that are kind of like hot for Link in a slightly uncomfortable way are like the fairies, in my opinion. Yeah. The, the great fairies. Yeah. Certainly in Breath of the Wild. It's almost oh my too much. It's almost uncomfortable in the, Breath of the, the Wild. The noises. There's like, there's implied activity with those things in Breath of the Wild. It's <laughs> it's a bit much. And certainly, I think, like, the uh, the great fairies in Ocarina mm-hmm. are all a little hot for Link in a weird way. And that's, like, I don't know if they're hot for Link or just hot for action. It's a little weird. <laughs> Whoever might visit, they have to giggle in some kind of capacity. What's your take at on them? the great fairies? Um, yeah, maybe they're just 
rambunctious. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a polite way to put it. Now that I think about it, the fairies have a but similar channel to like the women in the towns in Zelda 2 in Link's Adventures. Yeah. Or adve- the Adventures of Link. Um, when he goes to Rudo and stuff, mm-hmm. the way he gets hearts is a gal will say like, come inside, let me heal you. And he goes in and then, you know, people can mm-hmm. deduce what they like. Sure. And then he comes out and there's jokes about those women providing services and things. And like that all gets a oh. little weird in my case or in my opinion. I haven't but heard of or thought of that before, that connection. Well, okay. Another thing that gets a little weird is when Link like experiences like the soft beds in Breath of the Wild or the special beds. Sometimes there's audio of like, oh, he's getting a massage. He gets a massage. Really liking it. (laughs) Or there's like in there's times where it gets like borderline sexual and it's a little like, what is happening right now? A little bit. This is craziness and weird. But yeah, those fairies they are uh, um, provocatively positioned. I'll say that much in at least Ocarina in, of Time. In Ocarina, it's a little weird. Yeah. Um. What, what are the great fairies like in Twilight Princess? I don't recall. Are there great fairies in Twilight? Mm, I don't know. Like there, you said in the last episode, sometimes the games blend. Majora's Mask had great fairies, and they were vastly different than Ocarina. They had these massive, weird, bulbous heads and stuff, and they Ooh. were closer to the fairies that you see, like in Wind Waker and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, I don't recall them in Twilight Princess, but I'm sorry if I'm misremembering. Breath of the Wild. We have Mifa down in our notes. I'm. I can't recall who Mifa is. Yep. So she is like the. Um, she's the divine beast owner oh is she the zora yeah of the zoras she's and like so what, she's rudo she's the root advance yeah. yes and so okay so if you watch the honest trailer of breath of the wild on youtube which okay. i just did the other day uh-huh. there they introduce they're introducing the different characters and they introduce her as how would we even and then like that's it <laughs> because because <laughs> she's technically probably a different species yeah mm-hmm. and but she's I am trying to recall if she actually mentions marriage as well, or she. Oh, she's she's basically like I would do anything to heal you. I would yeah. do anything. Like she she says it several times. I remember going to the Zora's domain in Breath of the Wild, and as you learn through diet text with other characters and through a couple cutscenes, when you do, and even conversations with the king, when you learn that like oh Mifa was full on in love with Link. Yeah, I remember it being kind of sweet though. In Breath of the Wild. It wasn't like that kind of cheeky, you know, on the nose, Rudo stuff in Ocarina. Oh, no, it's very different. It felt real in Breath of the Wild. It felt cool. Even like, I even like had a moment where I was like, oh, (laughs) yeah, she she definitely looks at him with just, yeah, very much affection and Mm -hmm. love. And that's, I would say, the main one in, in Breath of the Wild. Certainly. That I found so far. I mean, I haven't. Yeah, I think, no, I think that might be thing. accurate. But, yeah. And I, I just thought it was interesting that she is also one of the Zora, like. So could Mifa be a, re, a re, not a reimagining, but, you know, one of these kind of half callbacks to, like, the Rudo experience? Oh, I think so, absolutely. I think so that's, that was my first thought when I came across those cutscenes. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I see what you're doing here. That's pretty clever. I get it. It's a little, yeah, it's a little less in your face, but you can also, you can almost blur it. Well, maybe, maybe the storytelling and the maturity of the storytelling has advanced a little bit in Breath of the Wild compared to a the times of Ocarina bit. and other things. I'd <laughs> I like to would think. say significantly, but yeah. Certainly. Um, what about Zelda in Breath of the Wild, do you think? So I enjoy the relationship with Link and Zelda in Breath of the Wild personally. Yeah. I think that blurry, for I the think, most maybe. part, they were able to kind of balance the line of her being an iconic character and being a bit of a romance. She's mm-hmm. kind of in the middle, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think, think so she too. does long for him. I think she's impressed by him. I think you know Link with this whole like Link doesn't talk thing. Sometimes he seems a little emotionally an emotional drought, but but I mean he has a lot of expressions. <laughs> it's a strong, silent type. He's definitely strong and silent in Breath of the Wild. And by the way, um. The other day in Breath of the Wild, I w- went back in and started re-exploring Hyrule Castle in depth. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know why I was doing it, because the DLC 2 pack came out, and I was trying to find the Royal Guard stuff, and all their stuff is hidden in Hyrule Castle. Gotcha. So while I'm doing that, I had found <laughs> Zelda's bedroom the first time I went through Hyrule Castle, the first time I defeated Ganon or whatever, uh-huh. 
and calamity. And this time though, I did a little bit more poking around and she has another observatory area and she has diaries in her bedroom and in her observatory. Yes, I have found one. So I found one of them the first time. I found both now. And I I usually get a little bit tired of the diary stuff. I kind of go, I read a couple pages and yeah. I move on. This time I thought, no, 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 let's do this. I'll read all of them. I'd seen all the cutscenes now. And she talks a lot about her emotions for Link and stuff like that. Yep. And she speaks about him being <laughs> strong and silent. And like, <laughs> it's a bit of a cliche, the strong, silent man. And in other ways, I feel like Nintendo does a really good job of breaking that down. Like... Link, like the famous like ponytail Link in the first trailer for Breath of the Wild, the kind of somewhat androgynous kind of, they didn't even know if it was a boy or a girl character in that first trailer for Breath of the Wild, they being uh, people. Mm -hmm. I think actually Link, I think Nintendo does do a very good job of that from time to time. But once in a while, we still go back to these classic archetypes of princess in a castle and a hero. the princess. And I guess there's some of that. And that's okay. Sometimes it gets a little boring by today's standards. Right. But um, it was interesting to read those diaries of Zelda. Yeah. And I think, well, the the memories and cutscenes of Breath of the Wild also help differentiate it from just the go save the princess in the castle because they really explore everything that, you know, happened. I just remembered that at our New Year, your New Year's Eve party, you came to me and you were like, I'm further along in Breath of the Wild. Oh my God, Zelda! And I was like, I know she's like a superhero who can't find her powers. She's and like, multi-dimensional, finally. Yes, I like, agree. There's a lot to her, and depending on which memories you find, I think you might have a different interpretation of their relationship. It's like a choose your own adventure, but eventually you read all the pages, right? And I do remember that interpretation of their relationship evolving as I found more and more memories, and I didn't yeah. find them necessarily in the in the numerical order. Oh, Which I'm I don't definitely think, not. I don't know if anybody does, no. really. I've found like half of them. And every every time you find one, it adds a little mm-hmm. facet, a little piece that you're like, oh, okay. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. I think like, I mean, there's that thing. Well, you know, we're, this is starting to turn into the Link Zelda podcast. And we're trying to do the other gals. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, is there anything in the original Legend of Zelda? Does he have any side pieces at all? I'm so, I keep, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't yeah. keep saying that. But um. I was like, I don't think so. Like the closest know. thing there is to a female character in that game is like the old woman. Oh God, <laughs> I hope not then. And where there's nothing there. I don't know. There's nothing there. Link's trying to save the princess there. Zelda 2's, in Zelda 2, um, she's, Zelda's asleep right from the get-go. We have Marin in Link's Awakening, who you have met now, I know, in your Briefly. playthrough. yep. Mm-hmm. But so far she's always, she's only been like, listen to the song, la la la. <laughs> and maybe you pine for her. Maybe Link pines for her a bit, but maybe I don't know yet. I'm I'm very early in that game, so we'll we'll see if that changes. But can I ask you about Tetra? Yeah, so Tetra's that complicated one... because of the spoiler. I'm so sorry. I ask you and then I start answering. I'm no, so sorry. Okay. <laughs> I've done that to you a few times in the show. But yeah, I mean, when you play that game, you're like, mm, I think I know what's going on here. I don't think it's hard to figure out immediately what's going on, but pretty quickly. Yeah, um, she's another kind of she's Midna esque, I think, where she's kind of teasing him and giving him a hard time and mm-hmm. kind of. But there's all those there's all the winking going on. There's a lot of winking. No, in the two DS games, yeah, right. That's true. In the two <laughs> DS games, cool. those are spiritual sequels to Wind Waker in that they have the same aesthetic and many of the same characters return. Mm-hmm. I don't think they necessarily are in order in the official timeline. Um, and those I have not played. Uh, Spirit Tracks might come right after Phantom Hourglass, mm-hmm. but I think Phantom Hourglass does not necessarily come right after Wind Waker. However, Tetra does come back. I was going to ask how that worked. Phantom Hourglass as Tetra, huh. even though we kind of know she's Zelda. Right. It's a little weird. But then by the time you get to Phantom Hour, or not Phantom Hourglass, by the time you get to Spirit Tracks, she full on is Zelda. Zelda becomes a ghost spirit and you often play as Zelda. So she completely transforms to Zelda as a character who becomes kind of the Midna, but she's Zelda in in Spirit Tracks. So confusing. So that's kind of an interesting, interesting mechanic there. Would you consider Tetra her own character and own side love interest in Wind Waker? Would you consider Sheik? its own character oh ooh, kind of so super smash brothers for the gamecube heavily implies maybe out of canon heavily implies that it is there's not a necessarily a magical situation it's zelda in costume yeah it's still a female as chic you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah yeah we're supposed to think chic's a guy the whole time during yeah. ocarina i think it's pretty clear that that is i choose <laughs> that it's zelda in those clothes yeah that it's not like a magical transformation or anything no i agree 
right, but cool. but it is i don't know it's kind of a se- separate character eh, maybe not i don't know that's fuzzy i don't know <laughs> so tetra is from a Would narrative you consider her zelda in the love interest theme that we are exploring today you know, and it's interesting because in that game, in Wind Waker, Link, his main objective is to save his sister. Right. And then, and that's why kind of Zelda is adjacent as Tetra. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, does Tetra actually fall into peril at the end of Wind Waker? Because she definitely falls into peril in the beginning of Phantom Hourglass. It's you definitely are kind of saving Tetra in yeah. Phantom Hourglass, if I may. Okay. Um, it's, it's been so long since I've played. I don't remember. Let me ask you this. It's kind of me. It's, I'm starting to interview you again. I apologize. If you could pick in any Zelda game, any gal that Link could end up with, who would it be? Like who he's best suited for? But who he's best. If you thought there was a best. Yeah. Yeah. What would it be? His best match, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um. Gosh, I might say Saria. Ooh, cool. Because a lot of people feel Ilya. I, I, that would probably be my second choice, yeah. honestly. But Saria, I don't know. And because her she, song follows him. That's, and that's sweet. That is sweet. And they can talk to each other that way with him playing her song. And they're always they're always very connected. And I think that's important in a relationship. So I don't yeah, know that he nice. and Elia had the same. He, he, Him and Elia, I think was much more one-sided. Like, I feel like he kind of felt for Saria, too. And... I would agree with that. In I felt that Link the felt, early game. felt for Elia, though. Honestly, I really so? got this. I got an impression that if he didn't have to leave that town, she did appear in his weird dream, weird thing. hallucinations. <laughs> so that probably means something, right? That she's part of that. So right. that I can I can kind of see where. No, I definitely believe like she was important to him, but I don't know that there is the same. I don't know connection that he and Saria had. So I, I think I if we use the logic of if if in Zelda it gets a little loose, basically if characters are relatively humanoid, they allow them to have romance. Oh, oh, I've got a weird one. I just saw this at the bottom of my notes. It was on the second page. So as I said to you, I was diving into I'm I'm playing because of this podcast. I'm playing many Zeldas all at once. Right all now. the games, all the games. I'm playing many of them. <laughs> I think it, off the top of my head right now, I'm doing Wind Waker HD, Oracle of Ages, I've dove back into Link's Awakening, but I gave it to you. Mm -hmm. A master quest for Ocarina, and I'm still playing Breath of the Wild. And so every day or two, I kind of jump in for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe an hour into one of these games, Mm -hmm. right? Just because I can't make up my mind. But it's also fun to jump around because of this show, which I'm really appreciating that. I was playing Minish Cap from the top. No, no, not Minish Cap. uh, Oracle of Ages the other day. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's a Deku tree in that game in the beginning, but it's called the Meku tree, and it's a gal. It's a female tree. Okay. Tree spirit. And you meet her as an adult, and she starts to disappear. She starts to, you could say, almost like die a bit like the Deku tree. Mm-hmm. And she says something like, oh, no, something must be happening to me in the past. The game's called Oracle of Ages. There's obviously time travel. Um, you travel to the past early on in this game. You find the little sprout of the Meku tree. Mm-hmm. And you save her from being attacked by some baddies, which obviously the implication is that if you weren't, if you didn't save her, they defeated her. She ceased to exist in the future. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you save her and she talks to you and she kind of is a little bit omnipresent. She kind of is aware of the future a little bit. She says, find me in the future. I can help you. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I'm turning around and I'm about to exit the screen because on the top down Zeldas, they're screen based. Okay. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. for the most part, with the exception of the DS ones, Um, as you now know from playing Link's Awakening a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm about to trigger to go to the next screen and she stopped, you know, the dialogue has been done and she says like, Link, I'm going to marry you someday. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, it's Rudolph all over again. And yeah. I was like, a freaking tree, tree wants to marry Link. Okay. Well, that's I, why you say organisms. Organisms. they could be, who knows? You're absolutely right. But. She like is crushing on Link. So with the Zoras, we don't have to, we don't have to get super nerdy about the logistics of how a romance would be executed. However, I think generally in the Zelda universe, if something is humanoid, they tend to accept them as humanoid. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the Rito and Wind Waker are basically humans. Mm-hmm. Obviously in Breath of the Wild, they're more of an anthropomorphized actual bird. Yep. But in Wind Waker, they just, they have beaks for noses and that's about it. <laughs> and they got some wings, but. What is it about Link? Okay, so I like have a theory about this. Like, we kind of mentioned this. the strong and silent, but, like, what I have a theory, and I think it's kind of a bummer. 
Okay. So I don't really want to focus on this, but I think it's too bad. But I think it's probably a little bit true and I think it's a little unfair and I'm sad to say it. These crushes are probably the product of game designers fulfilling certain, not fantasies, but like fulfilling, you know, like when you're building a story about a boy or a guy who's going to go save a princess, if you're not careful, and certainly back in the late 90s when games were a little bit less mature in their storytelling Mm -hmm. or a little bit less. And when I say mature, I don't mean like adult content. I mean, just more refined Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it does turn into every girl has a crush on Link in Ocarina because that's just the that was just the ability of the storytelling of the people who were building that game at that time. And I'm serious. Or about they that. thought maybe the fandom would get yep. it. Yep, there could be a bunch of that. Like every eight year old boy is going to want every single girl crushing on him. And I think <laughs> Zelda has grown past that. The, the series Legend of Zelda has grown past that. Yeah, that it's not eight year old boys it's playing this game. Much more complex. Yeah, now, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good wild. thing. I think the relationship with with uh, Mifa is well executed, actually, mm-hmm. and sweet in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Significantly better handled than the crushes that ha- are on Link in Ocarina. Yeah. I don't know if they're supposed to be, like, titillating that all these girls are hitting on him. I'm not sure what it is. I, well, some of it's for comedic effect, I think, definitely. Okay. Like, especially Rudo, where, like, he is i think he like he falls or there's physical comedy he's involved where little, he's just like Whoa! and yeah. like completely caught off guard by all this and i think that was probably just for comedic but um yeah i'm like what what is it if he doesn't talk <laughs> or I do was, you think they do talk we just don't see it well so i think so link in most of the games um, Link is it's implied that Link speaks yeah like the character kinda. will yeah. even in Twilight I think what they'll do is they fade to black and come back up if Link has to tell a story that's true and then the character reacts like wow I never knew that you know I think Breath of the Wild is the only one where they acknowledge that he mostly doesn't talk yes they never say he's actually mute or anything like that right is that okay to say <laughs> I think that's still accurate um, that he doesn't have the ability to speak and but it's more that he's choosing. There was a there was something in the extended universe where it's about, and maybe Zelda wrote about this in her diary. But the idea is he needs to show, not show that he's scared when he's scared, so because he needs to be brave, even though it's going to be really hard. Now that doesn't line up with like Wind Waker Link, because that guy emotes like a crazy person, yeah. <laughs> which is part of the point, and I'm yep. fine with that. I don't know. I think it's implied that Link talks most of the time. Maybe not so much, though. So know. mechanically, the reason Link doesn't talk is because Link is supposed to be us. Right. Or we are Link. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. To the point where I get uncomfortable sometimes putting my own name in as the file. <laughs> Do you, you know what I mean? when I was In the olden days when I was a kid, I always put in David. Right. And then everybody's saying David to me. I was like, okay, that's cool. But as I've gotten older, I find myself putting Link in because I much prefer... Them to call him by his actual they call name. Him Link. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah, I go back and forth. <laughs> sometimes it's just fun to put swear words. <laughs> okay cool <laughs> so it's entertaining because i'm think, 12 so i see your thoughts on saria uh-huh i think uh i think Ilya's is interesting um i'll go with you on saria on this not that, that not, not, not that that was the point of this episode yeah but that it's could an be interesting sweet, question that could be a sweet thing or i'm well maybe mifa too because like they had they had a long history together as well. Okay, if we're talking, if we're including Breath of the Wild, which I think we are, obviously. I think that first episode we recorded, we didn't include it just because of whatever. Sure. But yes, of course, we're including, including Breath of the Wild in this conversation. And yeah, Mifa might be the most fully realized, like, um, love. Other than Zelda, Not yes. even just romance, but yeah. actual love, yeah. 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 Because she was willing to do anything I him. think with Zelda, in Breath of the Wild, Zelda, it starts as... He's her. He's literally assigned as her protector. Mm-hmm. There might be a, an interest. Then it turns into respect, and I think it evolves into a certain emotion. Now I haven't. Again, I love. haven't played all the way through. But Breath of the Wild also seems more one sided with the Zelda part. Like she's kind of thinking about him, but I don't know that he's feeling the same way toward her. So this is shocking to me, and maybe we'll finish the episode on this. It's cool, Milo. I. And maybe because I'm a boy and you're a girl as we play these games. We're obviously (laughs) adults now, but like I have always felt that Link also shows emotions back. Mm. I have been like, yeah, of course Link is showing emotions back to Zelda and Breath of the Wild. Of course Link is showing emotions back to Ilya big time. Like I even thought like maybe it's hard to really deduce that in Ocarina because of the animation. But like with... um, 
he does have Saria his- and stuff. But I thought like my interpretation was like Link is totally in it. And now maybe is it is it me projecting as a as a male through Link in that experience? I mean, I have to be honest. Maybe that's what's going on there. The psychology of the Legend of Zelda. It's, it's we, we have to be fair and admit that perhaps a little bit. He does have. Yeah, he's definitely capable of more expressions in um, Twilight Princess. You can see his little smiles or, you know, his little soft expressions like. Oh. He's very emotive in Skyward Sword as well. Yeah. But he almost has lip liner on in Skyward Sword, <laughs> which is a little weird, but it's fine. To each their own. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't mean it's weird like as a choice. It's it's aesthetically a little weird because sure. it highlights his lips in a strange way. Sure. But anyway, well, maybe there we are. I think I think that's I think that was all that I could think of at the time when I was kind of going over the list in my head. But I'd say if anybody can, li- if anybody listening right now thinks of another character yeah, that might be an that. interesting, I think, okay, so characters that have crushes on Link, that's fine. But is there other characters out there that maybe in some of the handhelds that I, as I was thinking about these characters, after you mentioned this topic, I was thinking about if, again, I've said it in this show already, this episode, if Link didn't have to go do the main quest, would he end up with that person? You know what I mean? I'm trying to also, you mentioned the retone, how they're just uh, people with duck bills. And there's one in Wind Waker, in Wind Waker, the little girl, but I'm. She's kind of Marin adjacent. She's yeah. a bit like a Marin yeah, where yeah, she's yeah. there. So do you include her in this? She. List? So I think it's one of those where maybe the player projects a little bit. I mean, it's like, oh, I meet a character that's a female. It's the same size as Link. Same Sometimes size, that same lines age, up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, there might be some of that. She's a bit like a Malin or a Marin, in my opinion. Okay. She's there mechanically. It's sweet that um, he helps her and she thanks him. But at the end of the day, that's about it. Okay. I just wasn't. She popped into my head. And I mm-hmm. was like, what mm, about that one? But yeah, probably mm-hmm. not. Cool. Well, if anybody else has any other ideas about these characters, they can tweet us at yeah. another Zelda pod or they can leave comments on our Facebook page or YouTube page. If you're listening to the show on YouTube, you're more than welcome to leave it in the comments. Uh, you can find us on both of those services by just searching another Zelda podcast. You can also go to our actual website, another Zelda podcast dot com. I'm interested to hear what people's opinions are, like who they think would be the, his best. No, if people want to at reply you specifically, Kate, about this, they can find you. Oh, wait, you're not on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. Oh, yeah, flipping I'm weirdo. bad at Twitter. I was on joking. it briefly and I, I might because someone, I think, just like added me the other day. <laughs> like, apparently I'm still out there somehow. Oh, really? But I don't do anything on What's it What's your all. handle? Do you even recall? Is it I only take cat pics? No, That's your it Instagram wouldn't. Thing. It would probably like be, or something? be something like Cater Tot. In might, some kind of I capacity. I might find it. I'm going to revive your Twitter account and oh, you're going to be like, dang it. I don't get it. Twitter. I don't get it. Uh, Twitter's just like Instagram without pictures. <laughs> I like the pictures. No, no, I know. No, I'm just, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Pardon me. No, I'm just joking. It's not exactly the same. <laughs> but um, cool. All right. Well, I think we're done here, Kate. I don't know what our next episode is. We have a few things in the queue. We have, we have a some links, ideas. We have a Lynx Awakening review episode coming up in about three or four episodes. If people have anything to say about that, please comment to us. Yeah. Until then, this was fun. Yeah. This was great. All right, Kate. Well, oh, wait, I'm doing the sign off by accident. You're hosting this one. Oh, is it my turn? I don't know. Sure, why not? Are we, uh, we didn't mention our Instagram handles while we were discussing Instagram. Should we do that? Yes, please. People can find us. So I am at I only take cat pics, as you brought up before. That's my current Instagram name, at least. And Dave would be Raptor Paint. Mm -hmm. Raptor Paint on Instagram. And our show's Instagram is Another Zelda Pod. Yes. Which there's a bit of activity over there. It's fun. Yeah. I know both of us, we post little like screenshots when we're playing or little things like that. We'll try to post. Obviously, I always post something when an episode comes out. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. Yeah. It's a cool thing. Kate, I'm going to die, so let's go. Okay. Well, that has been another (laughs) Zelda podcast. I am Kate Fisher, and my co-host is David Geisler. And I guess we'll see you next time, right? You might have just created our outro. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Later, Kate.